establishing a new garden or bed, it's best to start with a clean slate, remove all the existing vegetation, and manage as many of the weeds and weed seeds as possible. Ideally, uh, if you have the foresight, you could start this a year in advance to the year before you're going to put in that garden so that you could manage as many of those weeds as possible. Now, the most common method for managing weeds is to use herbicide, but there's a lot of other uh, non-chemical alternatives as well. And I'm going to demonstrate some of those in this area. We're going to be putting in a new vegetable garden. And uh, we lifted the sod using a sod cutter, but there's still plenty of weed seeds, uh, grass seeds for sure, in this area. So I'm going to demonstrate how to solarize. And solarizing uses plastic to trap the radiant heat from the sun into the ground. And what that does is kill seedlings and seeds, and it, it can also kill some soil-borne diseases as well. So to get started, we went ahead and tilled this area. Uh, when you till, you bring up some other seeds that are in the bottom of the uh, deeper layers of the soil. So if you till, you'll bring those up and expose them to this heat radiation as well. And then you want to rake and smooth out the area as much as possible. I already did most of this, prepared it, um, but we want to get it really smooth so that we have good contact when we lay that plastic. We also want the soil to be damp. Now you don't want it to be saturated, but you do want the soil to be damp, kind of about, if you were gonna be planting a tree, about the same amount of moisture that you would use uh, if you were planting a tree. If you till and then get a good rain, maybe a day or two after that rain or the next day would be a good time to go ahead and lay your plastic. We're gonna lay out our plastic now and that's gonna trap all that moisture into the soil. Now the plastic that we use is clear because of course we want the sunlight to pass through and um, what happens is it's going to act almost like a mini greenhouse. The sun's going to penetrate through and warm up the soil below. Now you can use um, any kind of construction grade plastic, one to six mils, but the thinner stuff, one to two mils, is going to allow more light to pass through and reflect less and will be a little bit uh, better for solarizing. You could find this plastic at a hardware store, garden center, lumber center. Um, you could use um, paint tarps that you would lay down for painting as well. So there's so nothing really magical about the plastic itself. When you do lay it out, you want it to be as tight up against the soil surface as possible. And so you want to make sure when you're smoothing your soil that you release or remove any large clods. And there's several different ways of securing it. You can just use garden stakes, like what you would use for some um, fabric mulches, and you could line the edge of your plastic using the stakes all around. And you'd want them fairly close together because um, this plastic has to stay in place, and we have some pretty strong wind here, so you want to make sure that it, it gets nice and tight. Um, another thing you could do is to dig a trench and then bury the edge of the plastic with some soil and um, this way it'll be uh, tight and it won't pull up in the wind as well. So that's one method of securing your plastic and finally you could just use some rocks or bricks, uh, even some heavy boards and lay them along the edge of your plastic. Anything that's going to hold it tight and keep it in place. Now the best time to practice solarization is when the sun is at its strongest, so the months of June, July, and August will be most effective. In this application of solarization, we're, we're using this method to kill the seeds in bare soil but we can also try it with vegetation. You might have a weedy area in the garden and you want to solarize it. And we're going to experiment a little bit and try to solarize the turf. Uh, use solarization to kill out the turf below. And uh, there is some research evidence that this works. Um, 
I think the big test will be to see how it works against the Bermuda. We have some Bermuda creeping in here, and Bermuda grass can tolerate really high temperatures, um, around 140 degrees. So I think that'll be the big test in, in this little experiment. We're also going to do a different application. Now with solarization, we use clear plastic. And you can also use uh, black plastic as a way to kill out plant material. But it's no longer called solarization because the sun is not passing through and getting trapped below. When we use black plastic, we just call this smothering. But we're going to lay the plastic out and secure it in much the same way that we do with solarization. And with smothering, you don't have to use plastic. You might have heard of uh, like the lasagna gardener where they put stacks of newspaper, really thick stacks of newspaper. I've heard of people rolling out old carpets. So there's a lot of different ways to smother plant material and um, they're gonna be different in their effectiveness uh, from one to the other. But we're gonna just kind of experiment with this. We'll visit it again later in the season to see how well it works. Now with the solarization on the bare soil, you wanna leave your plastic in place for about six weeks. I'm guessing it's gonna take a little bit longer with the vegetation under it, so we'll just have to keep checking it. You can also combine solarization with other techniques. Uh, you can use herbicide to kill off the vegetation and then solarize to control any subsequent weed seeds that might come up. And you can also incorporate soil amendments into the soil before you solarize. Um, when you put some, say, organic matter in and work it into the soil, the solarization actually speeds up decomposition and so releases those nutrients a little bit faster. So just another technique that you could combine with your solarization. There are a lot of wonderful resources available. Uh, the Cal uh, University of California Department of Agriculture, they have a publication called Soil Solarization that is a very in-depth uh, description of the techniques and really excellent. Clemson University also has a publication on soil solarization. It's a little bit lighter reading. So if you want to read about soil solarization, that's another wonderful resource.